I'm Max, your pastor, and I am in Iowa City because of the Word of God and accounting to the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's the Lord's Day, and here I am in the Spirit with you. And as I turn from praying the collect of the day, I noticed a multitude, and I could count it. And I thought to myself, who are these robed in dresses and sweaters and jeans and khakis, and from where have they come? Well, sirs and madams, you know. You come from all over Iowa. You've got ethnic backgrounds from peoples of every tribe, nation, and language. You belong to very and varied diverse sets of academic disciplines and professions. You are quite an eclectic group of people. And yet, in one way, you're all exactly the same. You all live in the midst of the Great Tribulation, and of that there is ample evidence. You live in a world that is filled with false Christs and false prophets who present to you a Jesus that does not exist, but promise that if you follow this Jesus that does not exist, your life will be free from sickness and disease and filled with health, wealth, and prosperity. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, the Persian Gulf, and now the Ukraine, well, that reminds you that you live in a world that's full of wars and rumors of wars, where nation rises against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You live in a world in which God still makes us male and female, but hardly anybody can figure out what that means anymore, or if it even makes a difference. And so things spiral out of control. Marriage is no longer between one man and one woman for to life causes them to live it out and then die. It just becomes a contractual arrangement between two people for however long it seems to last. We've made some progress, but you can still slaughter your baby in the womb in this country. We've got all kinds of anxiety and depression and mental health issues that run rampant along with every other kind of disease under the sun. The world and your life is filled with poverty and shame and trial because it is a very great tribulation in which you find yourselves. So what's the driving force behind this great tribulation? Well, the chief force is the devil himself. He's a liar and a murderer. He's bent on your destruction. He's been cast down from heaven, and so he roams the earth like a prowling lion looking for someone to destroy looking to destroy you. And so he comes at you with his temptations and with his lures and with his traps, all in an effort to drag you away from the word and the works of God, from faith, hope, and love, into a life of despair and denial and blasphemy of God and all that is holy. He is out to kill you. He knows his time is short, so he's doing his level best to drag as many people as he can with himself and his hosts into hell knowing that Christ is coming to throw him and his hosts into the eternal lake of fire. Of course, another very strong and driving factor in the Great Tribulation is you. With every sin of thought, word, and deed, every sin of omission or commission, you simply add to the trial and the tribulation and the suffering in the world. I mean, think about your sins. Your idolatry, your adultery, your lying, your cheating, your stealing, your gossip, your rumor, your innuendo, whatever your sin is. And think about the pain and the suffering that that sin has caused you in your life, but also the pain and the suffering that it's caused the people you know in their lives. It all adds to this great tribulation in which we live. You know, amazing thing about this great tribulation. It is so commonplace, so much a part of our everyday lives that so often we forget that we're even in it and it goes unnoticed. For example, time was when there was a shooting at a school, the whole world would stop. But now it seems like if there's a shooting at a school, it just gets thrown in with the news somewhere between weather and sports. And Jesus says this tribulation is only going to get worse. He says, there will be great tribulation, 
such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. But we don't know when those days will be cut short. You live right in the midst of this great tribulation with the poverty and the shame and the sorrow and the death and all the other problems that are connected with it. From whence shall you gain strength? Where is the power to endure this great tribulation and remain faithful to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Where are you going to get the strength and the encouragement and the power that you need to live a Christian life in this day and age? John helps. He helps you by showing you what the elder showed him. And here's what he saw. A great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's who they are. That's who you are. Even though you're clothed in dresses and sweaters and jeans and khakis, you are nevertheless those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the story of you as a baptized child of God, that the blood of the Lamb has been applied to you, and how beautiful that blood is. The blood of the Lamb was shed for you on Calvary's cross when Jesus Christ died for you in your place. The blood of the Lamb washes away all your sins, be they of thought, word, deed, omission, commission, the sin you were born with, the sins you commit now, and any sin you ever will commit. The blood of the Lamb washes that sin away and cleanses you. The blood of the Lamb marks you as one who has been redeemed by Christ the crucified. And of this there can be no doubt, for Christ is risen from the dead. And as one who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb, whose robes have been made white, you have the absolute guarantee that the day is coming when Jesus will take you from this great tribulation and deliver you into that great multitude in heaven. You will be given the palm branch. You will be given the white robe. You will take your place with that heavenly choir. And oh, look at you right now. You're already warming up. You already join with that heavenly choir here in the divine service, singing out to our God that salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You've already joined your voice this morning with the angels and the archangels and the four living creatures around the throne, singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Here in the divine service, you're doing what you're going to be doing for all eternity. And on this All Saints Day, as we look at that innumerable multitude in heaven, we're reminded that we know so many of them by name. We call them mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, son, daughter, brother, sister, friend. They have gone on and been delivered out of the Great Tribulation to take their place and your place is guaranteed with them, such that what is said of them will be said of you. You're before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter you in his presence. You will hunger no more nor thirst anymore. The sun will not strike you nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be your shepherd. And he will guide you to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. This is our strength. This is our comfort. This is our power. This is our endurance. 
as we live here in the great tribulation, knowing that because our robes have been made white in the blood of the Lamb, we live in the tribulation not as victims, not as ones who are conquered, but rather as ones who have the victory of Christ Jesus, ones who conquer in Christ Jesus, and one who will be delivered by Christ Jesus from this great tribulation to the bliss and glories of his heavenly kingdom. All this is yours because your robes have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb, and the Lamb is yours, and you are his for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.